All right, what we're doing here is a Monte Carlo simulation using the same somewhat simplistic uh, financial calculations where we are given revenue, variable cost, and fixed cost, and we want to calculate profit. But now, instead of using a normal distribution for these input variables, we're going to use a triangular probability distribution. And so the triangular probability distribution is given here. What we need to specify is we need to specify a minimum value, the expected value or the most likely value, and then the maximum value. And note that unlike the normal distribution, this triangular probability distribution can be skewed. And so that might be a little bit more realistic for a situation where if we want to model something, uh, for example, we tend to underestimate cost or we tend to overestimate revenue, we can maybe account for that by skewing uh, this and not having it be a, a nice and symmetric distribution. So what I've done is um, we started with the same values for the most likely, for the revenue at 75 million, variable costs at 20, fixed costs at 30, and so you would see that our most likely profit will be 25. But then what I did was um, I entered the, instead of a standard deviation, we have to enter the lowest and highest values. And so I entered 70 and 80 for this, and as you can see, this is a basically a symmetric distribution. So I left that as being symmetric, but here for the variable costs and the fixed costs, I made them skewed. And so you see that what I've done is I skewed them to be um, higher cost. Um, and, and so what this means is probably we're expecting the revenue to be relatively well behaved, probably won't deviate that much, and there's just as much a chance as the revenue goes up as it goes down. But with the costs, Maybe what we are thinking is going to happen is that maybe our raw material or labor or something is going to uh, probably increase costs. Um, a lot of times we aren't going to expect to see costs actually go down. So um, that's that's the situation. And so what I've done is I set this table up and you can see that our profit can be calculated there. Um, from these extreme values and from our most likely value. Now just before we get into the some of the other calculations I just want to show how we can visualize the triangular probability distribution. Um, we can graph this um, <coughs> again using A as the lowest value, C is the most likely value, and B is the highest value. <coughs> Excuse me, we can graph this um, and that's what I've done here and so I've graphed the revenue, the variable cost, and the fixed cost. To do this in Excel what we've done is we've used nested if statements and so you can see the values up here um, you can take a quick screen grab and uh, get those um, get these formulas but that's the the formula that that we use to to generate these values so we could do this easily in one table rather than having to break the table up and, and do separate calculations manually so as you can see we've we've uh, arbitrarily broken this up into 20 little um, uh, 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 sections here and and plotted this and so as we mentioned the revenue is going to be a symmetric triangular distribution but our variable cost you can see is skewed to higher and our fixed cost is also skewed to higher to, to higher costs. <clears throat> so just like the normal distribution the area under this triangular probability distribution function is going to be one and so what we want to do in our Monte Carlo simulation is we want to randomly generate values that are on the x-axis for our revenue, variable, and fixed cost. And so to do that, what we're going to ask Excel to do is to generate a random number that will represent the area uh, to, to, to the left of that, <coughs> of that number. Excuse me, let me, let me back up. We want Excel to generate a random number between 0 and 1, and that will represent the area to the left under this probability distribution and then we will map 
that to the value on the x-axis. <coughs> so anyway, so we can do, and, and the formula <coughs> that is used to do that <coughs> is given by this formula. And so what we will do is we will use the random number distribution uh, function and you can see here that we have a value of 0.9664. And so what that means is that the area under the curve is going to be 0.966. And so what does that mean? That means we are going to be pretty close to the maximum value here. So we're going to be somewhere around here, somewhere around here. And so if you were to look at that, yeah, that makes sense. We're going to be pretty close to the maximum value. So we can do that for all of the other values. And you can see now, using this functional format, we can calculate what the um, x-axis val value is going to be for each of these, these input variables. And you can see for this particular case, our profit was $8.3 million. Now again, with the Monte Carlo simulation, what we would like to do is do this in our case, we're going to do this a thousand times. And so if you neglect some of this intermediate stuff that I've got here, we're going to move over to this table where I've set up our Monte Carlo simulation, again, for a thousand different calculations. And we are going to pull over the revenue. We're going to pull over the variable cost. We're going to pull over the fixed cost. We're going to pull over the profit. All right, once we do that, we can now set this up to fill this table with the rest of the 999 uh, calculations. To do that, remember we're going to go to data, what if analysis, data table, nothing in the row input cell. The column input, we're going to use a cell that ex for Excel to do the calculations that we will not touch otherwise. So I'm going to select Q6 here and whoops I forgot we need to select this entire table so control shift arrow down let's go back up now oh, control now we can go to our what if analysis data table go to column input cell we'll do Q1 Click OK, and now we've got everything there. Unfortunately, the formatting is a little off. Let's go to Format Cells. I did a custom format. Here's my custom format. There we go. So now we have everything formatted. A thousand different calculations using this probability distribution with the uh, shapes of the probability uh, distributions given here. All right. So what we can do now is we can start to fill this, um, look at these results. And again, um, we're looking at the median. We'll fix this, the, the errors here. We're looking at the median. And like I said, we're going to use the aggregate function. So we calculate the median profit, the average profit, the standard deviation, which doesn't mean a lot here but let's keep that in here. The minimum and the maximum, you can see now our maximum profit is about $32.5 million. The risk of loss, we forgot to divide by 1,000, which is a number. And so you can see we have about a 4.6% risk of loss. All right, so now what we can do is we can visualize our results further by generating a histogram. And as I mentioned before, I like to use 20 bins. And so calculate the bin width based on the minimum and maximum. And then I generate this table of the profit bins using that with the 25 bins. Make sure I use the max here. And then I need to use do the frequency. And this is going to be my data array which is going to be 016 to 01015. And then my bin array is going to be here. Then I have this. I'm going to check just to make sure 
there aren't any mistakes that should add up to a thousand that adds up to a thousand now I can do my cumulative profit uh, my, my cumulative profit frequency and so this is going to be this divided by a thousand and let's put that in percent and then this will be sum of this divided by let's just keep that there divided by a thousand again put this in percent and I forgot I need to um, we're going to keep that there so now I can drag down I forgot to fix that now I can drag down and you see that my cumulative percent comes up to 100%. And next, what we can do is we can graph these results. So here I've got a graph of the results histogram here. And um, I don't have the data labels. You, you can add the data labels if you like uh, for this. It gets kind of messy if you start to add too many of these data labels. But you can see here, notice that this is... Yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of a triangular shape, which we would expect, and it's kind of skewed maybe a little bit this way. Um, you see our risk of loss is 4.7%. If we look at our cumulative percentage, you can see, yeah, right at about 4.7%, we go from negative profit to positive profit. We can also, if we were to look at this on the histogram, we would be able to, let's add some data labels, it might get a little busy, but yeah, you can see that right around here, we go up to about, we, we, we cross over right at the, about the 4.7%. So anyway, um, what this does is this just illustrates how um, the Monte Carlo distribution works with a triangular profit, um, or sorry, triangular probability uh, distribution. One thing I wanted to note is that um, in this case, we need to have the random number generator outside of the frequency or, or outside of the, the calculation, the, the calculation cell, because this, this value is called more than once in the formula. If you look at this formula that we use, it's called more than once. And every time it turns out Excel, if you're doing the same calculation, if you're doing calculations within one cell and you call the random number generator twice, it's going to give you two different random numbers. Um, and so to, 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 to get around that, what we do is we have a separate cell where we have the random number generator for that calculation and it will reference that value each time. So we cannot call the random number function um, and, and expect the same random number to be generated within a uh, more than once within a formula. So that's one difference um, that uh, you might run into uh, with, with using Excel for these calculations.